thousands, thousands of universes, thousands of galaxies, thousands of planets, all over the world. In the beginning, and only, there was Howard the Duck. So, I'm here to review the movie. I watched it not so long, well, recently. And, um, I can understand people's flaws with it. But, I still love the movie. I grew up with it as a kid. Watched it so many times as a kid. First time watching it in years as an adult. The opening, the opening that I was talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if that is the Watcher from, um, you know, you know, the Watcher from the What If series, that voice actor that was in the beginning of Howard the Duck when Howard was going to, um, to Earth, and then it says Howard the Duck and stuff like that. I swear, I bet you anything, what's up, I bet you anything, that was the Watcher, bet you anything it was. Is it canon? Well, t t to be honest, this movie got re-released, and under it, it said, from the from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and some DVDs and Blu-rays. So, did Marvel make this movie canon? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say they, they did. I'm not going to say they didn't. Or, I, I'm just looking, I'm, when the DVD says it, I don't know, it's up to the viewer, you know? But, um, so in the beginning, you have, um, you know, you, you, Howard is in his house. You know, he used, he used to be in a band and everything like that. I love the stuff that they're showing, you know. Even though some parodies of, like, you know, of um, Raiders of the Lost Ark and everything like that. And, um, you know, she's a maniac, you know, that poster and stuff like that. So, so you get those references. And it makes sense because they, it's a duck world. Imagine this world. Well, te technically, this world is filled with Draco's, Palladians, um... Palladians, orcs, goblins, fairies, and another type of dragon that is called Naga, which is Hispanic and black people, and we're pure plasma people. That's where we roll. So, but in the How and the Duck movie, it's all ducks, you know? And they're, even their planet is shaped as an egg, which people might be like, oh, what the fuck? But... I don't care. I really don't care. I think it's fine. So he lands on Cleveland. <laughs> he lands on Cleveland. And eventually you hear Beverly's song, you know, that epic fucking song. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, you know, that fucking, you know, what is it called? What's that song called? Um, Hunger City. Good song. Good song from her. Lee Tom Lee um, Thompson in that movie is so fucking sexy, so fucking hot. I'll tell you this right now. She made me thought of things that I never thought of as a child. <laughs> you know? But um she's great in that movie to be honest. A lot of people might hate her in that movie, but I like it. Some people might not like this movie because the actors treat it like a a goofy comic book. Basically or not taking it seriously and all that. Look, I understand you guys want your sup your seriousness and superheroes. But wh whatever happened to being fun? Remember, these are superheroes. Some of these superheroes do crazy things. What kind of Spider-Man shoots webs from his fucking wrist? Have fun with that shit, you know? That's how, that's that's the thing. The mod the modern uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe right now, people want to complain about it because it's not being as fun in a way, and it's still having fun. But at the same time, there are some flaws with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, when, it, when they want to be serious, they make fun of it. At least with Howard the Duck, when it's serious, it's serious. They don't automatically be like, oh, here's a joke right here. They do it later. Or after. They don't do it, like, while they're being serious, you know? And the thing is, too, it, even in the, um, even when the Dark Lord, when Dr. Jenny gets possessed by the Dark Lord, they don't believe him at first and all that, which is... It makes sense. I mean, for crying out loud, you, there, there, there was a duck that came to, you know, to the planet. And obviously, that's the biggest thing that is in their, everyone's mind that sees Howard. But, 
everyone doesn't care about what Dr. Jennings going through, you know, poor Dr. Jennings. And that actor, yeah, that actor got caught with um child porn. So yeah, Ferris Bueller's principal got caught with child porn. Look at that. Makes sense, right? He was in the school, so. <laughs> but um, sorry. I'm trying not to eat a lot. I just got out of classes, so. They were giving out meat. And I'm just like, just give me these. These. Not, they not might be good for me, but at least it's not fucking meat. You know? Fuck that thing. At least I got cucumbers and an apple. I ate the cucumbers already. Got some orange juice, but whatever. I drink that too. Even though I'm lactose intolerant, got, I had some milk, but fuck it. You know, I have to wash something down with these. But, um. So, I'm going all over the place. So, eventually, Howard gets kind of get fucked up a little bit in the beginning of the movie because um, so many things are happening. You know, he, he's in a, basically in, in a, a fish out of water. You know, this is a fish out of water story. And uh, eventually, Beverly is, uh, you know, walking in the street, going home. And then all of a sudden, these guys are trying to, like, smooch her and try to rape her until Howard saves her. Howard saves a woman from getting raped. And not to say the character of Lee Thompson's that she's... Well, has, not to say Beverly doesn't kick ass, but kind of loud. When Howard... I mean, well, when she was fighting them back, she punched her dude and she's screaming, help, help, but she's still fighting, you know? So... And yes, Beverly... Lee Tompkin, Lee Tompkins... Lee Thompson is the first female Marvel character live action, all right? She deserves that. She does. I don't care if you guys hate the movie. She deserves that fucking title. Well, you're going to you're going to decide to do Iron Man, right? That woman that is what? The love interest to Iron Man. Look, I liked her and everything, but then I found out what she does. She makes spawn cakes, guys. That's not a fucking lie. That's true. Look it up. That's disgusting. That's cannibalism. That's another form of cannibalism. You know that? You know that, right? Just so you know. Some women and men are going to be, oh, so when a woman swallows my cum, that's a form of cannibalism? Hey. Do you, do you, you do you, all right? You do you. I do me. All right? So, so eventually, Lee, Lee Tom, um, Beverly wants to leave Howard, literally in the rain, but she asks him to come over. So he comes over, they talk and everything like that, get to know each other a little bit. Then the next day, she, um, um, Beverly takes Howard to, to see his, one, of his, one of her best friends, that's like a scientist quote-unquote scientist, janitor scientist. Yo, that's just fucking hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious in that movie, man. I love this movie. But I will say this. The How in the Duck movie, a lot of people might say, is it for kids? Is it for adults? To be honest, it's more for adults than kids. Because if you actually look at the comic book, the comic book is so weird and so crazy that it's not really meant for the general public. It really isn't. It's like a, it's like a mixture of Willy Wonka mixed with Alice in Wonderland. That's what how the duck comic books are. That's what they are. Then eventually it became kind of raunchy, like it became like a little bit, you know, like almost like pornographic in a way, but not really. Basically, it's almost like it's funny. It's not not like that, but more like it has more of an attitude. Like it has more of a um mature thing in one of those comic books. And some people might not like those comic books. But you see some of it in this movie. Look at look at when um Beverly and Howard fucking get to bed together, you know? People want to point out the bestiality stuff. Oh, is this bestiality? To be honest, no, it's not. How do you know? Because Howard has a conscience. If you have a conscience, if you can talk like a regular person, there's no such thing as bestiality. I was just, I just want to say this. If you still believe in bestiality that 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 type shit, then a black woman should then a black woman should not sleep with a white man, because that's bestiality. 
No, it's not. White people came from monkeys. Black people are not monkeys. Or Hispanic people, they're not monkeys. We're, we're serpents. And we're, that's, what we're, that's why they called us nigger during slavery. We're nagas. But if you go even farther than that, we're not serpents. We're serpents, yes, because we take that form. But we can take any form we want to because we're plasma balls. Well, colored people are plasma balls while ca Caucasian people are literally just hairy monkeys. They even say in this, they even say in the Howard the Duck movie. Howard is like, oh, so you guys are just freaking, you know, skinless apes? That's disgusting. And I started laughing when I saw that part because this movie tells you the fucking truth. Just by that, I mean, there, there's a lot of truths in this movie. There really is, you know? But going back, you know, um, you get the you know one of Beverly's on Friends. Um, I can't I can't I can't remember his name right now, man. I, it's sad that I forgot his name. But um, so eventually he looks at Howard and he's like, "Oh my God! Like it's this new discovery. I found it. You know, he wants to be famous from it. You know, and Beverly and Howard are just like, "Fuck off!" You know, and then Howard and Beverly like Howard just goes out of nowhere. He's like, "I don't need you, your sympathy, your charity, and all that shit." When I first saw that as a kid, that came out of nowhere. I'm like, what a dick, you know, you know, what an asshole. And even today, I'm just like, that came out of nowhere, dude. Like this woman trying to help you. It's almost like in the beginning, it's almost like in the Doctor Strange movie when, when this, when the female, when Doctor Strange's love interest goes to, um, goes to his house and she has like wine and everything like that. I remember watching that movie. I'm just like, oh, she's going to take care of him and everything. Oh, that, that's a woman right there. And then all of a sudden he... Tells her to fuck off. And I'm like, dude, she was going to take care of you, man. Fuck you. Fuck you, basically. You know? Like, fuck, man. You don't do that to a woman. When a woman wants to go out of her way to take care of you, don't be a dick. At that moment, she's going to be like, and this is the part when you apologize. And I'm like, great. You know? Like, and then eventually, you know, Howard tries to get a job. Doesn't really work all that well. You know, people look at him weird and everything like that. Which is, tr which is true, but at the same time, in the beginning of the movie, some people might be like, oh, how come they're not really reacting to Howard? This is a Marvel Universe where there's Incredible Hulk, Captain America, and Spider-Man. I think Cleveland have seen other shit besides, I don't know, a walking, talking duck. Just saying. And before that, we had Hulk on the TV show, Spider-Man the TV show, and obviously the um, Captain America TV show. So without those TV shows, we wouldn't have the cinematic movie that we have of Howard the Duck, you know? For kind of love, there's a reference to um, um, Cyclops in this movie. There is, this is a reference to Cyclops. When, um, when um, one of the main characters that is um, Beverly's friend, the, um, the janitor science dude, um, he, he tells um, Howard, hey, can you, you know, bend this metal with your steel or grabs a wood? He's like, can you, you know, put a hole with your eye lasers and everything like that. Yo, there's a lot of references to superhero movies in this movie. In this movie, There really is. There's not a lot, a lot, but there's some, you know? And from what they say is pretty good. I like it. I like those references. And, um, so eventually, you know, that whole sexual part with, you know, the whole bestiality shit, I already got into it. I don't have to talk about it. Yeah, so. I don't have to talk about it more. So eventually Beverly and Howard, you know, they meet up together, but Howard wants to get Beverly's money and her contract because um, the guy that has her, her contract is a dick. He's an asshole. And I love that scene, to be honest. Some people might say it's cringeworthy or, you know, I, I, love, the, I love that part though. He's like, yo, Richie, what the fuck is that? I think it's a talking duck. <laughs> you know? I mean, you would have said the same thing, too. If all of a sudden, someone's talking, you go like this, and all of a sudden, a duck is talking to you, you're like, yo, I smoked too much today. It was loud. There was something in there, you know? So, it's cool that Howard is just telling him off, and then they grabbed him, throw him over the ball, falls down, and Howard just goes like this in the top. Mm. You know, like... You don't fuck with Howard, man. Howard's a good guy. He's an honest guy, you know? He has a good heart. He's just a normal duck. He really doesn't have superpowers. But he will kick your ass. 
He's like, he's almost like Batman. You know? But to be honest, Rocket Raccoon, if you see how Rocket Raccoon is, that's how Howard is. Howard the Duck was Rocket Raccoon before Rocket Raccoon. I don't know what to tell you guys. That's true. Look at some of the comic books. I haven't read the comic books, but I've, you know, seen some, the old ones online and read some of them. And I'm like, holy shit. Holy shit. Now, I'm not talking about the modern ones because some people said the modern, the modern How the Duck comic books, some people say that they're not really paying the respects that he was in the original when the, the guy that created him, which he died in 2008. I thought he was still alive, but he died a long time ago. Which is sad. But it's funny that I heard that he went all out for his last comic books of Howard the Duck, and then he died. It's like he knew he was going to die. Come on. This is the world we live in, people. This is the world we live in. We're moving on. So they try to get Howard home. So they do that. But um, something happens. The, the big giant portal, basically, the big giant um, machine thing that, that brings Howard home, one of them breaks and brings another extraterrestrial in here besides, like, oh, we bought Howard here, but who do we, um, who else do, um, who else do we bought? When um, Howard goes into this facility, he's like, hey, um, is this going to delay my um, trip or anything like that? And one of the actors that's in the movie, he's like, is that him? Yo, that's unbelievable. You know, like, I love it. Uh, you know, some of these actors here actually do try, you know, and they put their heart and soul into it. You can tell they did. You kind of know the final climax of this movie. You, at this point, if you didn't think they put their heart and soul into this movie, you're a fucking idiot. That's why I didn't like the Nostalgia Critic review of it. I'm just like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. But, whatever. It's his opinion, right? Yeah, whatever. And then the whole, like, oh, um, change the channel didn't mean anything, right? Yeah, I mentioned that. People haven't mentioned it in, like, how many years? But I'm mentioning right now. Change the fucking channel. Hashtag change the channel. Alright. It's funny too. Because I was going to do a video about it. I was. I literally was. Because I haven't found no one that's talking about it this year. At all. Oh but no one's not going to do it. I mean no one's not going to talk about it. Because YouTube's not going to do anything. And yet. YouTube doesn't do anything. YouTube never does anything. It's up to the people to do something. But you guys gave up. At that point, I lost all respect for all of you guys. All right? All of you. All of you. All right? So moving on to the movie. The movie... So they try to get um, Howard back home. Didn't work, doesn't work. Then the um, Dr. Jenny gets possessed by the Dark Overlord. And the actor, Dr. Jenny, does a really good job of literally when he's changing his voice and his demeanor to become the Dark Overlord. Then his face changes, his, you know, his, his hands change and all that. You know, he becomes slit like this a little bit, you know, like he becomes a true monster and truly horrific. And a lot of people might say that, is this like a horror movie type thing? That's the thing. It's a mixture. That's why, that's why this movie kind of failed and bombed. It's sad that it bombed, but the general public doesn't like movies like that. I love movies like that. I do. I, I do love movies like that. Why? Because they're batshit crazy. And I love batshit crazy movies. It just resonates with me a lot more than just what? Movies that have a structure like, oh, get the girl or um, save the world and shit. This movie has it, yes, but it doesn't pay attention to it all that much because at the same time he knows what it is it's a fucking duck talking duck in a fucking ward that no one doesn't give a fuck about and then and that and then eventually they fight aliens and most people are like yeah but the people in cleveland they're kind of dicks and 
It was the 80s. Everyone was a dick in the 80s. Watch any other movie that had dick-ass fucking goddamn pathetic characters and come back and talk to me. Mostly every, mostly every, not all, but mostly every 80s movies is kind of like that. Why? Because they want to have fun. They don't want to, you know? Like, I'm not saying good character development is not there. I mean, look at the Alien movies. The first two. Good character development, you know? But some movies from the 80s didn't have to do that, man. They just want to be fun. You know? And then, and the thing is, when a movie wants to be serious, like, for example, The Dark Crystal, it's still bombed. So what do you want? No one, it's, a, that's the thing. That's why I didn't, that's why I don't get people from the 80s, man. What did you want in the 80s? And that's why I have a big complaint with people from the 80s, because, not, not the people that were born in the 80s, just the critics. Because they wanted something like Citizens Kane. If you want, if you were not Citizens Kane, you were shit, basically. Even though, even though Citizens Kane bombed, no one's not going to remember when it bombed. So why are you remembering when Howard the Duck bombed? You know, when I was a kid, I didn't even think about that. I was just thinking how the movie was, and I loved the movie as a kid. When I rewatched it as a dog, I was like, I can see why people say it's bad, but I still enjoyed it. Like, in, in a few seconds, like, in a few minutes of the movie, like, not a few minutes, but when it gets a little bit to the end, like, when it's in the middle, it does slow a little bit because it pays attention to Howard getting to jobs and everything like that, which is fine, but to me, it, it, it was, it, it didn't have to go as far. You could have just had one scene of Howard, like, the whole, of like, the whole thing of, well, to be honest, he only had one job. He was just looking for a job. Then he just got it. Then he had that. And then I'm listening. He quit. Then saw Beverly again. So you know what? Never mind. I just wish it was shorter. Just shorter. You know? It didn't have to put that. It didn't have to be that long. You know? Like that part when Howard gets, you know, goes to the water pool and everything. Well, actually, actually, you needed that part. Because then if he did it to his boss, he would have been like, how, how, how's that weird? I mean, how's that um, a thing? So I'm trying to think what they could have cut out, but I think anything that would have cut out, it would have just confused the movie even more or made the movie even like, like what the fuck. So. It is Friday. This is what they do every Friday. They put this alarm on just in case. The test, test. But when shit does happen, they're not even going to put that. Watch. Guarantee you. When shit goes down, they're not going to put that shit. They don't give a fuck. They're mostly doing that for them. Just saying. For who? For the government. You think they're doing it for the people? They don't give a fuck. Alright? Since when the government cared about its people? People here in the United States still think that. You're fucking naive as fuck. Fucking naive. And what happens to naive people? They die off. I said it. It's just like in the animal kingdom. So moving on. Sorry I'm getting sidetracked. It's just that when stuff happens around me, I have to mention it. Or else it's just going to be stuck in my head and it's going to fucking pound me like this. So I have to say it. All right? Do you want me to go fucking cuckoo? Because I will. And you don't want that. And it won't be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> you know? But, um... So, they go to this diner um, because Beverly eventually gets kidnapped by um, Dr. Jenny, the Dark Overlord and everything like that. But before she gets kidnapped, they go to, obviously, they go to this um, restaurant. And I, li I like the set. I like the set design and everything like that. I like the way Howard the Duck looks. Um, at the time, as a kid, I thought he looked awesome. It still looks awesome. It's just that the, the, the beak doesn't really f um, go right with its mouth sometimes. Other times it does. And other times he looks creepy as fuck. I didn't really realize it until I watched it recently. I'm like, how? I'm like, to be honest, how looks kind of creepy, you know? But hey, it was going to be animated. This movie was going to be animated. Hell, you probably could have done Howard as cartoon and everything else live action. It'd probably be more expensive. But you could have done that, you know? 
But um, other than that, that that dino scene was great in my opinion. Everyone's going after Howard. They want to kill him and shit. Beverly says, "Oh, he's my boyfriend." They're like, "That's disgusting." <laughs> Yo, that shit's funny as fuck. I love that part. That shit's funny. So going back to that bestiality shit. So if you're fucking a dog, then that's bestiality. But if you're fucking a person like a go- like Goofy, that's not bestiality because Goofy can actually talk to you and actually have a conversation with you. Can a dog can or, or a cat? No. What, why do you have? Okay, I want to say this. If that's bestiality, if that's bestiality and the other one is not, basically, I mean, I mean, if that's bestiality, if being, you know, Beverly and Howard, if that's bestiality, then why do you have fucking people going crazy over Judy Hopps from Zootopia? And ever since, I'll say this right now, I wasn't a, fur- I wasn't a fan of furries until that movie. Blame that movie. Because once I saw, you know, Judy Hopps, I was like, he made her too hot. He made her too sexy. And yet some people are going to be like, oh, that's bestiality. No, it's not. It really isn't. You know, where the bestiality came from? It came from Rome. Because Rome people actually fucked animals. Yet, in Egypt, you had humanoid beings that had animal heads. That's not bestiality. That's, that's what they look like. <laughs> they, can't, they look like that on purpose. They were born like that. It wasn't like a mixed gene or anything like that. They were just born like that. Right? Just because their mother had a normal face doesn't mean their kid won't have an ego face or something like that. Because that child, that soul, decided to be what it wanted to be. Yes. All right? Now, how come we haven't choose all... Because the physical and the spirit world are not together. If it was together, you would have a choice what you look like. Your soul looks like that, but you're not your physical presence. This avatar. That's how you know you live in a simulation. All right? A video game. So, moving on. So, Jenny gets kidnapped. Um, not, not Jenny. Beverly. Beverly gets kidnapped. And um, you have this whole thing with Howard and um, the, um, the, this other dude um, escaping from the cops. Because eventually the, um, the FBI or something like that, or the, you know, or the cops, basically. Cops find out that, oh, you know, he's alive and everything. He's real. Um, there's no zipper on him, no buttons. This guy's actually real, you know. Um, seeing that as an adult now, I'm just like, Yeah. You know, as a kid, I really didn't thought about it. But now as an adult, I'm just like sinking in like, yeah, dude, like he's real, you know. So my um, battery is about to die off about 5%. So I'll be quick. So eventually um, they go where the Dark Overlord is, fight the Dark Overlord. And then eventually um, the Dark Overlord and Dr. Jenny all sep- <coughs> separate. Dr. Jenny's fine. But he knows that the Dark Overlord is still around here. So they try to get out. All of a sudden, the Dark Overlord pops out of nowhere and looks fucking badass. As a kid, he looks scary as fuck. He looks pretty damn scary. And that stop motion animation is the highlight of the whole movie. That, that stop motion animation does steal the show. It steals the whole movie. It does. You know, it really does. And, you know, Howard destroys him. Even though Beverly's like, no way, you can't, dest- you can't destroy, you know, because there was all the monsters coming in. So when um when Howard destroyed the Dark Overlord, there were other evil beings that looked like him that were coming in here, um coming in to the planet. And Beverly was just told Howard, "No, you will never get home and all that shit." And Howard was like, "Goodbye, Duck Ward, move." And then he blasts it and everything like that. He gets knocked out. Beverly thinks he's dead, but he's not. Um, kind of fucks with her a little bit, which is kind of funny. Then you get this whole ending of them singing Howard the Duck, which is a good song in my opinion. And the movie ends, you know? And Howard tells Beverly, not bad for a duck from outer space. You you were great, ducky. And then that was it. That's the movie. So how do I think about this movie? I think this movie is not bad at all. Does it have flaws? Oh, fuck yes. But I will watch this movie than Cat in the Hat. Fuck Cat in the Hat. That movie is dog shit. Even people that like the How the Grinch Stole Christmas with the Jim Carrey, I don't like that movie at all. But 
people like that movie, and when people see the Cat in the Hat movie, they're like, that is shit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. This fell right there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, guys. Tell me what you guys think about this movie. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you see what I was talking about? You know, with all the stuff, especially the whole Beast of Alley shit and everything I was talking about in a spiritual way also. But um, that's really it, guys. Take care. And tell me what you guys think about this movie. I really enjoyed it. And I could watch this movie any time of the day. So thank you guys for watching. And be safe. And I can't wait to see Howard in the other parts of Marvel. We saw him in What If and in, in the other stuff in the MCU. So hopefully we get more of Howard the Duck. And I did hear that they might do a Howard the Duck movie again in 2023. I don't know if that's true. But keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. I'll see you guys later.